Like I have to mourn this life, this fantasy. What's up guys, it's K13 and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a video about asexuality. So in this video today, we're going to do a little like book review kind of deal for Alice Oseman's book, Loveless. It is a book about a character that finds out that they are asexual and aromantic. Like this is the first book I've ever read with an exclusively ace and aero character. I was really excited when I found this book. I found this book at Myers, um, but I'm pretty sure you can find it pretty much anywhere. It's popular. Alice Osman, I found out, is like a popular writer. So I found this book and I got really excited because I've never seen, again, I've never seen an exclusively aero and ace. I've never seen either or exclusively, but um, this character is both. And um, this is Georgia, she's the main character. So first off, I just want to say that there will be spoilers, like major spoilers in the book. It's kind of already a spoiler when you read in the book jacket that it's about a character that finds out that she's ace and aromantic. Anyway, this was a really good book in my opinion. I really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite books that I've read recently. So I don't know about all time, but it has been a long time since I have been so like engrossed in a book like I was engrossed with this one. But basically I'm just gonna go through each note in order that's in the book and then I'm going to like share my opinion what my thought was basically talk about my experience and how it relates to this book. And for those of you that don't know but can probably assume from this video and this playlist in general I am asexual but I'm also aromantic. I started to identify as asexual back in 2020, realized that I was also aromantic in 2021. So the first note that I have initially is right at the very beginning of the book. The book starts out, um, again, this is spoilers. I'm basically going to be telling you what happens throughout the book, throughout my notes that I have. So if you don't want it spoiled, then um, go read the book and don't watch this video. The story starts out with them at a after party, after their prom, they're at some classmate's house and Georgia is surrounded by a bunch of couples kissing basically and she kind of sits there wishing that she was one of them. She's never had any relationships before. They're seniors and she's like 17, 18 right now. She's never been in a relationship, never kissed anyone, barely had any crushes currently in this, currently at the very beginning she has a crush on a classmate. So yeah, she talks about how she wishes she was one of the couples kissing. She just wants to kiss. I grew up wishing I was in a relationship, but I never necessarily wished I was kissing. I didn't like see another couple kissing and be like, oh, I wish that was me. Like I was always grossed out uh, whenever I saw people kissing in public. <laughs> if I saw people like classmates or just anybody kissing. I wasn't like, oh, I wish that was me. For me, it was just like, ew, gross, get a room. So they're all playing truth or dare. Bunch of like high school seniors. It gets to be Georgia's turn and the girl asks um, Georgia, what's the worst romantic or sexual experience you've had with a guy? Georgia's like, gets all embarrassed because she's never had any experiences. She doesn't know how to answer. They're all like, oh, you never even kissed a guy? You've never kissed? She was like, no, it's not that weird, is it? And it has this moment where the classmates all will kind of take pity on her. They kind of treat her like a child, like, oh, sweetie, it's okay. You'll have your moment, it'll be fine. And like, I just marked that down because that was one of the things in the book that I did not relate to because I've never had a moment where people look down at me and be like, oh, you're 25, but it's okay, you'll find somebody. Oh, you haven't kissed anyone? You've never had sex? It's okay. Oh, you're so pure. Like, that's what they say in the book. You're so pure. Like, very condescending. Would be very annoying. Never happened to me, thankfully. <laughs> that would be really annoying. So, like, it has the moment where... There's this guy 
that she's crushed on since middle school, never talked to him, and he was also pitying her when he hurt her in the game, so she's never kissed. So then she like runs off by herself all alone, feeling embarrassed, and then he's there, he comes up to her, kind of creepy, because he's she's by herself, and he's by himself, so he approaches her, they're alone. He comes up to her and then he basically tries to talk to her, make her feel all comfortable with him. They go sit by the fire pit and he basically <laughs> tries to kiss her. He's like, oh, I know you haven't kissed anyone. It's okay. Just in the whole time. And I feel like if I, and again, I've never had this experience. None of this has happened to me. The closest. I've ever been to kissing a guy was when I was with my ex-boyfriend and he asked me straight up like do you want to kiss and then I'd be like no thank you maybe later <laughs> I did have a crush in middle school on a guy in the grid above me and it's not like when we were in high school and then like years later we never talked but he knew I crushed on him and then he's like um I, I can kiss you you've never kissed like we never like that never happened to me thank god but that's what happens in this book but i feel like if something like this did happen to me i would feel exactly what georgia was feeling she was being irritated she was feeling disgusted she was creeped out she was grossed out yeah and then it moves on to the next chapter which starts out with her saying there had been signs i'd missed all of them because i was desperate to fall in love and then she goes on to list every boy that had had a crush on her throughout her life in elementary and middle school and high school her kind of being like oh yeah this makes sense I wasn't interested in any of these guys this makes sense I don't like I don't want to do any of this <laughs> and then she comes to the real realization she didn't fancy Tommy she didn't actually have a crush on this guy that she thought she had a crush on um, and that she never crushed on anybody which so I half relate to because even though I have had crushes on guys since I was in the third grade, Orlando Bloom as Legolas being my first, and then it just, it took me a long time to realize I crush on people, but it's all aesthetic. Um, it's not romantic or sexual. It's a fun roller coaster, really. Like, and, and I, I mean fun, like not actually fun. It's a fun roller coaster trying to figure out your sexuality. Um, but, that's how Georgia feels. She kind of realizes that like she's never had normal urges or desires that a lot of people have. And so she kind of just notices, oh yeah, I didn't like Tommy. Odd. So a good chunk of this book is Georgia being a new freshman in college and she basically tries to get the full college experience. She realizes that as much as she wants a full college college experience she doesn't want to like have a where she's just going out partying and having sex with everyone she kind of knows at this point that she does not want to just have sex she realizes that I want a boyfriend or a girlfriend I want to fall in love with somebody I want to meet that special somebody that I can eventually feel that desire to kiss them and desire to have sex with them so that's what she starts to look for when she goes off to college and her roommate Rooney becomes her new like best friend Georgia is struggling to find a guy that she is into. So Georgia and Jason are talking at this club. Rooney kind of notices them because it, Rooney had made it her job to hook up somebody with Georgia. Rooney sees the two of them together. She notices the way they're looking at each other, or at least the way Jason is looking at Georgia. She basically outs them because Georgia could not tell that Jason had a thing for her. Rooney basically goes up to them and she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't see it. You two, you two need a date. What the heck? Best friends become lovers. And then they both get embarrassed because George is like confused. She never saw it. And Jason's like, oh no, I've been outed. Long story short, they start to date and it's really awkward. She basically decides that she'll date him to experiment to see She's like, ideally, he would be a perfect date because he's attractive, he's a sweet guy, we're friends, we like each other, have a lot in common, he likes her. So to Georgia, he would be ideal. 
she just isn't sure how she feels yet. So she decides to date him. She doesn't tell him that he's basically like an experiment. She, cause she isn't super like forward about her feelings thus far about the sexual and romance stuff. They date for a short time and then uh, they kiss and it's awful. Georgia hates it. And she basically tells Jason that she thought if she tried to kiss him or tried dating him that she she basically is like oh yeah I don't actually like like you but I was hoping that if we dated I would eventually start to like like you and he gets pissed off rightfully so and that whole thing sticks with me because even though this isn't what I did with my ex like I didn't start to date him as an experiment or or I I thought I was still like pretty heteromantic. I didn't think there was anything wrong with me or there's nothing wrong with being romantic. I didn't think there was anything abnormal. It was just weird with my, with my ex-boyfriend. The whole experience was just kind of like overwhelming to me because we met online. I was online dating or trying to meet guys to date online. We met online, connected very well. I just noticed that shadows in the shot. Shadow. Shadow, Shadow, say hi to the people. Anyway, for me personally, it was like, we went on a few dates, then he asked me to be his girlfriend and I said yes. I really liked him and I thought that I would eventually start to like him even more. I wasn't all like, oh yeah, we're gonna get, like we'll fall in love and get married. But I, I just wanted to see where things would go because I was already talking to another guy before him. I was, I was a girl in my twenties with like barely any dating experience. And I just wanted to keep meeting guys. I just wanted to see what was out there. I just wanted to explore me and explore like ex experience dating. I kind of thought it would have been easier if we like didn't stay official and like if I reached out, but I did like him enough and he asked and I was excited. I had all the butterflies in my stomach feeling like that whole warm, happy feeling. I think the way it was for him was he also didn't have a lot of dating experience and I think he was just super excited to be dating. That's how I was with my first boyfriend back when I was 19. I was just excited to be dating more so than the fact of dating this specific person. And I think that's how it was for him. I think he really liked me but he i think was just excited to finally have a girlfriend and do the dating stuff because this guy was a romantic let me tell you this guy because we celebrated valentine's day he went all out on valentine's day all out presents dinner like paying for me he was a true gentleman too that just kept making me feel worse because i kind of like i kind of always knew i wasn't a really romantic kind of girl but I always kind of thought, oh, I'd be romantic to somebody I'm really into, but in a less traditional romantic kind of way, because romance can be different for all types of people. But he was like traditional, like buying presents. He got me jewelry. He got me a flower. Like he asked, like I had to tell him, I don't want a whole bouquet. Like if you're going to give me flowers, give me one, like one single rose. It was just, I realized after a few months of dating him that I wasn't the romantic type. I did not, like, it was embarrassing Valentine's Day. Like, it was awesome from him, for him and for me as somebody that, like, that likes to receive nice things, but like, all I did, like, and he got me a nice card too, a nice real Valentine's Day card. I almost did that. But then I thought, no, that's probably a little much for our first time together. So I'll do something kind of cute. So I got him like an actual like Valentine's Day, like the kids. I did a Blue's Clues. I got him a little Blue's Clues, like elementary school kid Valentine's Day card. And then he got me an actual real adult <laughs> Valentine's Day card. And then I only got him like some cookies and candy or something. I didn't get him anything that would last for Valentine's Day. So it was just one of those things where I don't think he cared. I think he was just 
happy to have a girlfriend and happy to celebrate Valentine's Day with me. He didn't care so much about stuff, but it just was awkward that I didn't I've just never been a huge Valentine's Day person. It was fun when we were kids in school, passing out candy. <laughs> but as an adult, I never cared. I never wished as a single person to be dating so I could celebrate Valentine's Day. I don't care. Anyway, I'm getting too off topic. I kind of relate to Georgia just because as she was dating Jason, she kind of realized like, oh, I'm not into dating either. What's wrong with me? And I never asked myself what's wrong with me. It was more just like, oh yeah, I don't think I'm into dating. I'm a romantic like I figured it out because I already knew about everything she's still in this like learning stage so she becomes friends with an upperclassman at their school Sunil is a gay asexual in this book and then uh, Sunil has a best friend in the book that is a romantic Sunil basically becomes like the person that educates Georgia on everything a romantic and asexual kind of feel like Sunil does a bad job of it. Not totally. It's just kind of weird how things get explained spotty throughout the book. Georgia basically finds out about asexual and aromanticism through Sunil. Even though she hears about the term a couple times, she doesn't really do the research until later in the book. The whole time she's just in denial. It's just interesting to me how like I never had any of these conversations with my friends or anybody that Georgia has conversations in this book. So next, she she's trying to figure out what's going on with her. She kind of opens up to her friend Rooney more. And they're talking about, you know, like masturbation to celebrities. And George is like, people don't do that. And Rooney's like, yeah, they do. And it's really funny because she kind of makes Rooney question herself. Because I think people that are asexual, we kind of have more self-doubt about what's normal and not normal. We're kind of like, oh yeah, we don't do that. We don't masturbate to celebrity pictures. Everybody probably does that. So everybody's normal and we're not normal. Or at least that's how I think. I don't I don't know many a lot of asexuals, so I don't know what other people think. But it's really funny in the book, in my opinion, because George is like, people don't do that. People do not wank is the word they use in the book. She's like, people do not wank to celebrities. And then Rudy's like, yeah, they do. Do they? That's just funny to me that Rooney's like, wait, am I the weird one? And then they go on to talk about like sex dreams and all this other stuff. And Rooney's just like, you do this, right? And, and Georgia's like, no, ew, no. And Rooney's like, am I weird? Um, and then in the chapter Brainwashed, I really believe a lot of this is true. Um, Georgia kind of goes on to think about how she's been brainwashed because of society and societal norms because of how much their peer pressure there is going on with kissing and having sex and dating and marriage how it's all over tv it's all over films and music and how it kind of conditioned her to have her own fantasy of what will happen in her future of being happy and so even though i never fell much into this trap i kind of just always assumed that i would fall in love with somebody and it would all happen naturally. I never felt a lot of peer pressure growing up. I never felt this pressure to rush things because I wasn't even allowed to date until I was 16. And then when I had turned 16 and my parents were like, okay, yeah, you're allowed to date. You're mature enough. And then I was like, okay. There were times when I would be sad that I was single. There were times where um, I would see couples like my friends in school like in high school especially I would feel this a little bit outside of like after beyond high school but mostly it was in high school where my friends that were dating each other would be together like on the bus or on a field trip and they would kind of just be sitting holding hands and they would look cute and I would want that and I would be sad that I wasn't dating anyone. I've never in my life have felt desperate enough to be dating that I had to date somebody that I wasn't actually into. For me, it's always just been like, well, I really, really want this, but I'm not gonna go looking for it. It'll happen when it happens. When it gets to this one part with Jason kind of realizing the truth about what happened between him and Georgia, it's messy. Kind of ends with, Jason had real feelings for me. He deserved someone who is actually able to reciprocate. Do I relate to that? This is exactly how I feel about my ex-boyfriend. Because my ex-boyfriend 
I think was falling hard for me. Did the words I love you ever come out of his mouth? No, and I'm glad they didn't. Do I think that's how he felt about me? I'm pretty sure. This book really helped me to vocalize my experience and my feelings and to feel validated, which is nice. I had like so much anxiety dating him. I realized I only liked him platonically. I don't think I've ever felt anything other than platonic friendship for people. All that to say, this, this line that she has, Jason had real feelings for me. He deserved someone who actually was able to reciprocate those feelings. That's how I felt with my boyfriend back when I was dating him and that's why I broke up with him. I was like, I like you, but not in this way. You're a great guy, you're a perfect gentleman. You deserve somebody that will reciprocate these feelings for you. So then in this next chapter, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and read this whole chapter. It's called Fantasy Future. It's really short. It's literally like just a page long. I'm just gonna read this to you because I 100% relate to this chapter. It wasn't just that I'd hurt Jason. It wasn't even having to accept that I was some kind of sexual orientation that barely anyone had heard of, that I would have to find some way to explain to my family and everyone else. It was knowing with absolute certainty that I was never ever going to fall in love with anybody. I had spent my whole life believing that romantic love was waiting for me, that one day I'd find it and I would be totally, finally happy. I'm actually gonna stop myself there for a second. I'm gonna come back to this. This is something else that I think is damaging within the purity culture, within Christian culture. As again, as someone that grew up as a Christian, when you're growing up, being taught that God has a person for you, that God has a significant other waiting for you, that you just haven't found their up, that you just haven't found the right person yet, God has plans for you. Um, and if you turn into somebody, you turn out to be somebody like me, that can be kind of damaging. I feel like this could potentially be hurtful to a lot of people in the ACE and or arrow community. Because if we're constantly being told at, from a young age and into growing up that, oh, well, you haven't met the right person. God has a plan for you to be married. God will provide you the person that will make you happy. And then if you realize that you are like a romantic and that you will never feel actual romantic feelings to somebody. And if you're like me, we kind of realize like, oh yeah, I don't want to be married. I don't want kids. I just want to be by myself for my whole life. If that's somebody else, like for somebody like not me, somebody else, that could be really harmful to somebody. That can make somebody feel like trash or like they're sinful or something. It's just gonna make it more complicated. This is why this stuff should be taught. It's okay to talk about other options. It's not wrong or sinful either. But now I had to accept that it would never happen. None of it, no romance, no marriage, no sex. There were so many things that I would never do, would never even want to do or feel comfortable doing. So many little things I'd taken for granted, like moving into my first place with my partner or my first dance at my wedding or having a baby with someone. Having someone to look after me when I'm sick or watch TV with in the evenings or going on a couple's holiday to Disneyland. And the worst part of it was, even though I'd longed for these things, I knew that they'd never make me happy anyway. The idea was beautiful, but the reality made me sick. That paragraph, <laughs> y'all have no idea how much I relate to that paragraph. It's true, and I love this book that it can put into words my feelings. Like, yeah, I'm sad at the same time. These are things I always wanted. I always assumed like, oh, I'm gonna get married and I'm gonna have kids and we're gonna go do really cool parent things with our kids. I have to mourn this life, this fantasy. Shadow snoring. <laughs> or snoring, I don't know what that was. She's asleep and she made a really funny noise and it scared me. Crazy to think how like I had this fantasy future, even if I didn't like live my daily life thinking about it, it's still a future that I've fantasized about since I was at least eight, if not younger. And so to say like goodbye to all of that, it's sad. It's like, yay, cause I don't actually wanna have sex. I don't actually wanna kiss anybody. I don't want to share a bed or share a house with another person. I want to live individually. 
if I do have kids, it might be in the farther future, I might adopt or foster, but I don't want to have babies <laughs> with a partner. How could I feel so sad about giving up these things that I did not actually want? It's like this confusing, conflicting feelings. Do any of you all feel this? I mean, somebody wrote this into a book. It can't just be me, but I don't know anybody else in real life. I see people all over on the internet, aromantic and asexual. I don't know anybody in real life like this. I felt pathetic for getting sad about it. I felt guilty knowing that there were people out there like me who were happy being like that. I felt like I was grieving. I was grieving this fake life, a fantasy future that I was never going to live. I had no idea what my life would be like now. And that scared me. God, that scared me so, so much. And then it gets to the actual chapter where she reads about a romantic and asexual. Like she actually finally looks it up on the internet. She was thinking, this is a made up internet thing that is stupid and fake and absolutely not me and yet it was me she has a lot more like conflictions and like dramatic stuff internally going on with herself than i did and that's i'm sure it'd be hard if you found out that you were both ace and arrow at the exact same time i kind of had a cushion between the two asexuality i was reeled into because i questioned it for years and did lots of research and then I still researched aromantic, but I just never believed I was aromantic. And then after accepting my sexuality and being comfortable with that, then it took me a year to like notice that I was also arrow. So it wasn't like I was finding out I was two of these things at the exact same time without actually knowing what they were. So I get for her that that was more like upsetting to discover. I also feel like it was kind of unrealistic that she also ends up having a cousin that is also both aromantic and asexual. Like it's not impossible, but it's seeing that both of the orientations seem to be the rarest out of all like the orientations out there. It seems odd to me that the main character is asexual and aromantic, and then her cousin ends up being asexual and aromantic. Okay, this is the last note that I have in this book. It's not till the very end of the book that she comes out to her best friend Pip and Pip is a lesbian and Pip is really confused when Georgia tells her about being asexual. I only noted this part just because I love this because this is my favorite comeback. So you, if you are either aromantic or asexual or both like me, this book provides the comeback if somebody questions the validity of your identity because Pip goes on to say can I ask a dumb question this is gonna sound bad but like how do you know you won't find someone someday that's one of those common questions you will probably get when you come out to people how do you know if you've never tried it because I've had people be like oh you haven't tried kissing you might like it how do you know I'm like yeah I mean if I tried it I might like it but also I'm happy enough without it I don't feel the need to try it I don't want to and I really don't think I would like it same as if I I'm sure there are a lot of foods out there that I don't like even though I've never tried them probably might like them if I tried them but at the same time I know I want to try them because I'm pretty sure I wouldn't like it Georgia goes on to say to Pip I know myself I know what I feel I know what I have the capability to feel and think I mean how do you know you won't fall for a guy one day and I love that answer. So if a straight person says to you, how do you know? Then you say, how do you know that you're straight? How do you know you won't find? If a straight guy says, how do you know? You say, how do you know you won't meet a guy someday? I love that comeback. And I love that it was used in the book. That is my like thoughts that I have about the book and how it relates to me. Our experiences were totally different, but in a lot of ways, this book just really helped me to kind of grieve just because it hasn't been that long that I've identified as aromantic. And so there are a lot of times where I'm okay with it and then there are times where I'm sad. So this book helped me to like really process my feelings. And so I'm really grateful for this book. If you have not read this book, I recommend to go read it. I know I just spoiled like everything, but there's also, there's a lot of details and stuff that go on in here that I did not mention that I left out. So even though I spoiled a lot, there's also a lot you don't know. So it's still a good read. It's cute, it's witty. Um, cringy sometimes, yeah. What, why a teenage drama romance novel isn't? 
all right guys i hope that you all learned a little bit something about aromantic or asexuality i love you guys and i'll see you all in the next video have a good day bye Wah.